All right, Doombots, uh, this is an early and new style of video for TSA. We are going to talk about whether or not you should buy character offers, or more importantly, uh, what to do with your money in the game. So now's a really good time to talk about Sven and Kristoff. So right now we have an option. We can spend $30 to have a three-star version of Sven and Kristoff now off the top of your head. If you've been following along, you know that three-star characters do not matter. They, they don't. They're not relevant, right? So what does the three-star bundle actually give us? Well, considering the fact that we currently can see Kristoff and Sven, but we can't see the other three characters, whom I believe are Olaf, Elsa, and Anna. Definitely Anna. For the line, I've also heard that Elsa is the chase character, not legendary. Uh, she may end up becoming a legendary character. However, the concept of legendary seems to be lost on some people in this game. So to clarify, a legendary character is a character that I can't spend money and get directly. Um, if the character is in orbs and I can buy orbs, then they're not legendary. Usually, a legendary character, among any game that has legendary characters, is a character that you can only accrue through building up the team used to unlock them. And that is true of multiple different games, so this won't be any different. Uh, for example, Jafar is not the legendary for the Aladdin team, nor is Dash or Jack-Jack the legendary for the Incredibles. They are just the chase characters. They were the hardest to get characters, but you can spend money. If you can spend money directly to unlock a character, there is no reward to unlocking the character or working on the team for the character. Therefore, they are not legendary. It's semantics, I know, but it's true. So, right now, if you're asking, hmm, how are uh, these offers going to affect me and should I buy them? Well, that's a very, very, very simple answer. Maybe? I don't know. Right now, I'm not buying these offers. And that's a very simple reason why. Because after the Onward team, the Toy Story team, and of course the Incredibles team, what I've found is every single team that they have released since the launch of the game and any team they've reworked has been for Club Conquest. Now, if Club Conquest is something that excites you, then it's very important that you do have access to the newest and greatest team because the more people who have access to the team versus the people who don't, the better off you're going to be in defending key components or nodes during Club Conquest. Now, if I have to go into detail on Club Conquest in a later video, in addition to the video I previously did, which is right there, by all means, let me know and I will do so. But for right now, this is something that I want you as a player willing to spend money in a mobile game to think about. You see Kristoff and Sven, you see that there's about four days, five days, six, three days, whenever you see this video left on the offer. You don't know what Elsa, what Anna, or what Olaf do. You don't know if they're going to be so good in Sorcerer's Tournament that no one will even be able to compete with the existing characters in the game. You don't know if there's a setup coming up where maybe the Incredibles were really good at beating this team, but no one else. You can't tell that yet. So if you do decide to be an early adopter, um, you have... You're taking a risk. You're taking a risk as to whether or not Kristoff and Sven are worth buying in the first place. And for some people, the $60 risk to unlock these characters, as well as any other offers that may came up, may not matter too much. But for others, that might be relevant. So keep in mind that that is a risk. The end result for you will guaranteed always be a Club Conquest team. If that means something to you, then great, you're still getting something that will help you. They are Wilds characters, so there is a chance that there is some overlap with them and how they can interact with maybe a tower progress or something along those lines. But ultimately, it's a risk. So what I would advise anyone to do right now is to pay very close attention to not only the characters, but some of the content that may be coming out over the next couple of days that don't tell you that this character is great or this character isn't, but that go into detail about why this character is great. For example, <clears throat> Dash is a very good character, and I tried to make sure that it was well known that the reason Dash was so good compared to the rest of his team or included on the rest of his team is that he represents a very quick and high impact damage dealer, where some of the other characters like Jack-Jack, uh, Violet, 
uh, they were cool and fun and exciting and probably important to their team, but didn't have the impact Dash did. And as we can see from now, Dash has kind of taken over as one of the top independent characters when you make Mishmash put together strong teams for Arena or Sorcerer's Tournament. So if that's the case, uh, what I would do uh, is wait because these offers aren't going to go anywhere, uh, at least for another four more, more days, uh, and more offers will come up. But until you have an understanding of what this team's going to do, and until you understand why this team will matter, there's no reason to make this purchase. Now, if I were in charge of the offers, I would have shown everybody everything off the bat, because it just makes more sense, right? You'll make more money if everyone knows the team is good. This kind of release implies that maybe the team might not be that good, and considering the last two events have released teams that, while comparatively, are good teams, uh, they don't upstage the current best teams in the game. As a matter of fact, characters like Judy Hopps and uh, Jack Sparrow still continue to be good because of how high impact the Kingdom modified teams are. So, if you want to know whether or not you should buy Kristoff or Sven today, the answer to that is very simply, no, there is no reason to buy them today. The only reason you could possibly have to buy them today is if money is no object and having the best characters is important to you. And if that's the case, then by all means, don't watch a video talking to you about how to spend money. It's irrelevant to you. But I do want you to know that as of right now, without seeing the kits and how they work, without truly knowing what those characters can do, Seeing what we see with Sven and Kristoff, they don't look impressive. And until we know what the rest is, you have plenty of time to wait. And then, when you see the rest of the characters, spend 50, 60, 100, 200 dollars. Once you know that this team is going to be a team that will do more for you than just be placed on defense uh, and absorb various amounts of energy and materials that you probably have a limited resource of. Uh, I, this technically extends to the Onward Bundle, but that's another story for another time. I just want you guys to know that as this game progresses and as characters and new characters come out and offers come out, etc., etc., it's really important to know what these characters are for for you. If you're a very new player in the game, you've been playing for less than a month, you're progressing, which is probably most of the player base at this point. Uh, perhaps characters like Kristoff and Sven and maybe the entire Kingdom team, no matter how much you love Elsa, and that movie Frozen might not actually help your roster and therefore might not be worth the money you have to spend to get it. But that's not on us uh, to decide if the characters are good. That's on Glue. It's only on us to decide whether or not it's worth our money. So I'm holding off on this and I hope you do too until we see a little bit more of the kits and characters and how they work together and what they're useful for and if that ability, if that usefulness actually matters to you. Um, keep in touch, comment below and let me know what you think so far of these two characters, and more importantly, pay attention over the next couple of days as we find out more information, because I will be releasing more DSA videos regarding the character offers, whether I think they're worth it, and just in general offers. Uh, as a matter of fact, you might see a video tomorrow of general conversation about what I think about character offers, but that's for tomorrow. But comment below and let me know what you think. I have looked over Kristoff and Sven's uh, kits on my stream, and they look like they work very well together. But to what end? It doesn't actually matter if they don't upstage one of the top teams in the game, if they're not better than, say, I don't know, The Incredibles, and they're an okay team, then why do they exist? For what purpose? What content will they help you with? Those kind of things. Let me know what you think. And until the next video, have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.